So up until prior to 2006, um, there was hardly, there were no provisions for special inspection for wood that were in the codes. What uh, verification was done in the field was done through structural observation, through building official inspections. It was very limited in scope. It was not special inspection as the code defines it. And it, to a degree, it was kind of left up to the individual engineers and, official, and building officials to do that. There were some local building codes that had special pro inspection provisions for wood, but they were pretty limited until the 2006 IBC, where special inspection of wood elements were brought into the building code for the first time. These, this was part of the overhaul of the wind and seismic special inspection requirements that was done in the 2006 IBC. In addition to that, the inspection requirements for manufactured items, which has been in the code for many years, was expanded to include uh, wind elements, selected wind elements, and then high load diaphragms, which previously had uh, required special inspection through the ICC report that the American Plywood Association put out. That was brought into the code along with the design provisions for these elements. And you'll see uh, noted throughout the presentation references to both the CBC, the California Building Code, and the IBC, the International Building Code. Um, since about half the audience uses one and the other half uses the other, I'll be uh, referring to both interchangeably, but the sections, the provisions that are contained in both codes are, are essentially the same. So now that we have these provisions in the code, uh, the special inspectors now need to learn how to inspect the wood framing. Uh, the building officials need to determine how to qualify wood special inspectors and structural engineers need to learn how to specify special inspections. Now, because this is a relatively, these are relatively new provisions, there is no established program for certifying or qualifying special inspectors for wood framing like say there is for welding. Um, there are, however, recommendations and guidelines that are out there, some of which I'll talk about. Um, that can be used to educate everybody on how to do special inspection for wood framing, including hopefully this webinar. So an overview of the, of the specific provisions, uh, 1705.5 of the IBC and CBC contains the special inspection requirements for that don't relate to wind and seismic. This is where you find the inspection requirements for fabricated items, for high load diaphragms, and for bracing of long span trusses. The seismic requirements, uh, which apply to seismic design categories C and higher, they are contained in section 1705.11.2. This is where you'll find the inspection requirements for shear walls and diaphragms and collectors and so on. And there's the exception in there for uh, special inspection for uh, when you have fastener spacing greater than four inches. And I'll talk about that here in, in some detail here in just a minute. Well, we're going to take a look at the history of the Uniform Building Code, and we have to reflect back to 1943 when Section 204 brought masonry inspection into the fold. And if you look down there, it says, on masonry when the design is based on unit stress in excess of 50% of those allowed in Chapter 24. Anybody that's as old as I am remembers the half stress penalty for masonry. If masonry was not continuously inspected, we had to design our stresses at 50% of the level that we would normally design. That's what gave the motivation to uh, put masonry inspection into play because if we have to over design, that is penalize our design by 50%, it's going to give us some motivation to inspect the masonry because there's a cost trade-off of design and what's constructed versus a cost for quality control, quality assurance, that is masonry inspection. And if we look a little bit further, we can see in, and this is still back in 1943, the registered inspector shall be approved with and deputized by, deputized by and assigned by a particular building or structure in the building inspector. It doesn't say that it's an ICC or IBC certified masonry inspector. If my brother-in-law knew something about masonry and I was the building official, albeit a conflict of interest, I might have made him a masonry inspector. Certainly a conflict of interest, but back in 1943, things were done a little bit differently than we do today, and today we're a lot more sensitive to those kinds of issues. Another thing about uh, masonry inspection or inspection in general is continuous or periodic, and I call it the great mystery. Tim reflected on it a little bit, saying that wood is uh, has a little bit of continuous inspection, 
But with masonry, we have had periodic special inspection for a long time. Uh, I use the 1997 Uniform Building Code, although it existed prior to that, because that's when the transition between the 1997 code, the last edition, and the Inter International Building Code came into play. Now, periodic special inspection. How much is enough is the $63,000 question. And interestingly enough, the uh, Uniform Building Code and the International Building Code have not touched the definition. And we were under some uh, pressure over the last couple of building cycles to put something in there. Try, try to list what periodic, uh, what, or try to quantify periodic special inspection. And if the I codes are not willing to do that, it's, it's really uh, a sensitive area that the masonry industry wants to be very, very cautious about taking on and taking the responsibility, saying, if you reach this level, that's enough. So later on in the presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about where we've gone with that. And uh, I think we've made some success in defining what we need.